Hi, my name is Charity Mendenhall, and I'm a graduate nursing student at the University of Texas at El Paso. Today I'll be uh, demonstrating a respiratory assessment to a group of undergraduate nursing students. Um, first, we'll start by sanitizing our hands. The equipment that we need will include a stethoscope. Make sure it's appropriate to the size of the patient that you're going to be listening to. And then you also need a watch to count the respirations. So after we sanitize our hands, we're going to go ahead and greet our patient. Hi, my name is Charity. I'll be taking care of you today. Um, and then we're going to sit down and do a quick patient history. So we're going to hold a conversation with the patient and that gives us um, some clues as to how their respiratory assessment is at the moment. If they're able to hold a conversation with us, then we know that they're not having too much trouble at the moment. Um, the kind of questions we want to ask are about their past medical history. So do they have asthma? Um, are they suffering from COPD? Um, do they use oxygen or a BiPAP at home? We want to know why and what kind of medication they're on. We also want to know their social history, like do they smoke or what kind of environments are they exposed to, you know, at work or at home, and do they have coughing or sneezing or anything like that. The next thing we want to do is measure the respiratory rate. And the way we do that, we usually don't tell our patients that we're going to um, count their respirations because then they'll, they'll start to kind of manipulate and become conscious of how they're breathing. So we want it to be as normal as possible. So we'll say, well, we're going to take your pulse. So I'll reach for her arm and pretend to take her pulse, but I'll be also uh, counting her respirations. We're going to do that for over a minute. If I notice that her respirations are regular and that there's nothing abnormal, then I can do it for just 30 seconds, and then whatever number I get, I'll multiply it times two. But if I do notice something irregular about the pattern, I'll wanna go ahead and count for the whole minute. All right, thank you. Also, we wanna observe the way that the chest looks. So we wanna notice the size and the shape. So going across her laterally should be longer than going front to back or anterior to posterior. We want this to be shorter. Um, this is normal. We don't want her to be barrel chested. This is not normal for like a, a young healthy person because um, that means that there's air trapping. So either they've got some kind of respiratory illness going on. Um, older people normally do have a barrel chest, but that's just because they lose some of the muscle strengths in their chest. Um, another thing we want to note is the color of her chest. And we also want to note um, if, how hard she's working to breathe, if she's using any of her accessory muscles to take a, a deep breath in and out. Um, next thing we want to listen to are for sounds that are audible that we don't need a stethoscope to hear. So if there's strider or if there's wheezing or if there's grunting when she breathes, those are abnormal and we want to investigate those a little bit further. The next thing I'm going to perform is called palpation. So I'm going to go on behind her here, and I'm actually going to ask her to face um, the wall over here. And I'm just going to feel on the back of her, or on her back here rather, and just feel for any bulges, any pulsations, um, any depressions, if I feel any knots or anything like that. And we want to make sure that we're making contact with the skin. Um, uh, one thing that's abnormal is called crepitus, and that's when there's air trapped between the subcutaneous tissue, and you'll feel like a bubbling underneath the skin. So we don't want to feel any of those. Also, we want to check thoracic expansion. So I'm going to tell the patient that I'm going to pull up on her shirt here and expose her back. And I'm going to place my hands just like so, so that my thumbs are right there at the base of her spine. I'm going to have her hunch over a little bit for me and then take a deep breath in and out with her mouth and see what happens. So we see the chest expand and then come back. And this for her it was equally, this is normal, it equally expands and then it equally comes back together. So if one side was to rise a little bit higher than the other side, that would be abnormal. The next thing we're going to check for is tactile fremitus. So I'm going to put my hands back on her back again, and then I'm going to ask her to say something for me, like Mickey Mouse or 99 or Common. Can you say 99 for me? 99. 
Okay, so what we're feeling for here are the pulsations um, in her back. So it should be equally noted on each side. If one side is a little bit harsher than the other, that would be something we would note as abnormal. The next thing we're gonna perform is percussion. And so this is like a light tapping on the, on the either the front of the chest or the back. Um, I'm gonna do indirect percussion. There's also direct percussion. So indirect, I'm gonna hit my finger and then hit the back of her chest. I'm gonna actually have her um, hunch over it for me again. And that makes it a little bit better. We can hear a little bit better. Now, the normal sound for percussion is called resonance, and it's described as a loud, long, and hollow sound. What is abnormal to hear over the lungs is hyperresonance, because that can indicate some air trapping, and that's um, described as being very loud, like a booming sound. And then what's also abnormal is a sound called dullness, and that could indicate that there's some kind of fluid or mass um, in the lungs, and it's described as a medium and low thud sound. The, um, next we're gonna go to auscultation, and that means that's when we're gonna use our stethoscope to listen to her lungs. So first we wanna sanitize our stethoscope with an alcohol wipe. And we wanna sanitize the diaphragm. The diaphragm of the stethoscope is what we'll use, and we'll make sure we apply it directly to her skin. We don't want to be listening over the patient's gown or anything like that because that could um, kind of distort our sound. So we want to make sure that we're applying this directly to the skin. And so we're going to go over with what's normal to hear over in, uh, in the lung fields. So over the trachea, which is the top part right here, we're going to hear a sound called bronchial or tracheal sounds. Now these sounds are tubular and they are loud and they, they, they're they heard like over a long expiration. Um, and they're they, you'll only hear them over the trachea, which is this top part. The next part is called bronchial fascicular and you'll hear them over the bronchus, which is a little bit lower in the lung field, but it's still near the middle. Um, this sound is normal and it's described as being a medium pitch. Um, expiratory and it, when the patient exhales and inhales it should sound like the same and it's could also be heard over the upper right posterior lung field. For the rest of the lung fields um, you can hear vesicular sounds and they're low in pitch, they're soft, they're short on expiration um, and they're they cover the rest of the lung field. Now, those are normal sounds. It's much easier to hear the lung sounds on a uh, thinner person than it is for someone who's heavier or who's really muscular. So also take note of that. Um, the next thing, we're gonna cover the abnormal lung sounds and they're called adventitious sounds. So if you hear any of these abnormal lung sounds over any of the lung fields, then that warrants um, a further examination. The first one we're gonna discuss is called crackles. Crackles are can be defined as fine to coarse. And just like the name states, it's a crackling sound and it's caused by the alveoli in the lungs popping open. Uh, the next one is called ronchi and it's like a low pitched snor snoring noise. Um, it's usually heard during expiration and it's due to fluid being in the bronchus part of the lungs. The next one is called wheezing, and that's that musical high-pitched sound that you can sometimes hear without a stethoscope, and it's caused by a blockage in the airflow, so it can be heard when the patient inhales or exhales. The last one is a pleural friction rub, and that's like a rubbing or grinding, grating kind of uh, sound. It can be also be heard on inspiration or expiration, and it's caused by an inflammation in the pleural surface surfaces. So, when you do the sequence of your auscultation, um, there is not one sequence that's recommended. It's more of you find your own sequence that best suits you and be consistent with it. So that way, um, you know, you can officially do your respiratory assessment each time. So we're gonna do a quick auscultation of her lungs. We wanna make sure we cover every part 
or every field of the lung of the lungs using getting both sides. So you're going to extract the patient to take a deep and slow breath uh, with their mouth. So can you do that for me? Okay, and then we're going to come across to the other side. Going to make sure we get the bases of the lungs and take another deep breath. And then one last deep breath here. Now to listen to the lungs um, on the lateral part of the body, it's better for the patient to take their arm above their head. So I'm going to ask the patient to take their arm above their head. And then you would place the diaphragm of the stethoscope right here, right along the side of their body and have them take another deep breath. Okay, and then I'm gonna have her face the side for me. You could take your arms back down. Now we're gonna li listen to the anterior part of the chest. The patient should be just exactly the way she's sitting, sitting up nice and straight. And again, you would take your diaphragm directly to the, her skin and then have them take a deep breath. Making sure to cover both sides of the chest and make sure we get both the bases of the lungs also. And take another deep breath and exhale. Make sure, making sure they're taking those deep, slow breaths. So that completes our respiratory assessment.